We are now outside my home. Uh, this is MC Hammer, which is wounded. Yes, it'll be fixed soon, so uh, please stop asking me about that. But today I will measure, well, it doesn't really matter, this uh, damage here. Uh, I will measure the, um, the battery capacity on MC Hammer. This is a Tesla Model 3, um, long range performance. And you see, I've been charging it to 100%. It took a while. It's been <clears throat> it stopped at 496, 497 kilometers and then waited a bit and then I started charging again. So you see, and then it stopped again at 498 and now it goes to 499. Or, so there could be some um, some balancing or some, yes, and now it stopped again or some calibration going on right now. But I think we are pretty, like, we are pretty full now. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a f completely fresh battery, unfortunately, but close enough so it's done almost 8,000 kilometers it's done some supercharging and all that but you know because this is a pretty you know efficient car then uh, we're not talking about that many cycles here to drive 8,000 kilometers um, maybe only some 20 cycles you know um, so all right uh, so now the plan is to drive from my home um, and up to, we well, just drive E6 here because it's nice and, and calm, but um, I will also measure some, one thing, which is how accurate is the odometer, because I've actually seen there could be a difference, maybe just one, two percent difference, but that also counts. So what we'll do is we'll drive over here, and according to Google, it's, well, this one says 101 kilometer, when I check Google, Google claims that it is 102 kilometers there, okay? 101 or 102, close enough. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I, 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 according to Google, it's 102 kilometers. So we will see in the trip meter if we get 102 kilometers or not. There could be a little, uh, there could be, a, um, you know, uh, an error there. So, I will go to, well, I will reset this one just for fun. Okay, reset. And then off we go, I guess. Do we have to change anything here? Um, by the way, there is no range mode in the Model 3 anymore. So you go for driving. We have acceleration, chill or sport. It doesn't really matter. Chill might be a little bit too slow for me. Um, we will drive mostly in constant speed anyway, 90 kilometers per hour. I have the Nokian Hakoplita R3 19 inch wheels on. So we'll do that. Uh, so let's uh, start driving then. Okay, we just started driving and uh, you see this is an indication that we are uh, very close to 100% because the dotted line here shows you region limit. Um, when the battery is fully charged, then simply it doesn't have more space to store more energy. So this is an indication that we are very close to 100%. Yeah, uh, there's almost no region. So let's see if I just let off now. Well, actually, there's some region, okay, but... So, um, uh, and for you guys who are wondering, so what, why am I doing this test? Well, this test is to measure how much energy we can get out of it when it's almost new. And it will be a reference point for when later, about in one year or so, when I measure the degradation, because then I know how much it had when it was new. And we can compare that with the results later. Yeah, we have some region here. Hmm, are we really full? Well, I think so. It's close enough. I'm not gonna waste my whole evening trying to push it to 100%. Yeah, okay. That guy, I think he doesn't know I'm coming. I'm like a ninja. Yeah, okay. He, he saw me now, so yeah. All right, so let's uh, start cracking then. This will take a long time. We have been driving for 48 minutes and uh, let's try to coast. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. There, we are now in neutral. And see, consumption is pretty low, 137, it's dropping, <laughs> And now we're just free rolling down this hill, yeah. So it picks up speed, I think we have a little bit of headwind. Uh, oh wow, yeah. So the speed limit here is 110, so I'm actually allowed to coast this fast. Uh, there we go, we see the wind soap over there, yeah. It's getting greener here in Norway. There, okay, a little bit of headwind. Yeah, Mjosa today, Mjosa, Norwegian's long, the largest lake, is nice and calm. So, um, good 
driving condition, mostly dry roads. There were a little bit of wet road on the way here, but over here, nice and dry. So, low consumption, each rack is off for now, but I will turn it on later. Now I have to switch on, there you go, okay, and then um, I have to do this. I kind of don't like this, but I have to tune down speed. There, okay, yeah, there we go, good. Alright, um, let's uh, just keep rolling then. Alright, so we are now close to the turnaround point and um, you know, according to Google, well, before we started, I checked Google at home and it claims that the distance from my home to the turnaround point is exactly um, 102 kilometers. Okay, let me see, I have to cancel that. Uh, okay, let's just do this. Okay, so it, it, it claims to be exactly 102 kilometers according to Google. Uh, and here we come. Now we have to measure up to the point where uh, before the bridge. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Um, <clears throat> so here we are already at 102 on the trip meter. So it means that we have a slight measurement error. I mean, the, I mean, the, there's a slight error here between the the car's odometer and the real world. But the the measurement error is almost insignificant in this case we should try to measure other cars but look here okay 102.5 yes so according to google to this point is 102 and this one shows 102.5 so we have about 0.5 percent error then yeah uh, i think that is so small that i don't even want to care about it i mean you could of course take the 0.5 percent and and calculate the, the correct uh, and maybe we'll do that towards the end the correct for to find the exact kilowatt hours because um, the car uh, well actually this one you know we will measure they will measure uh, kilowatt hours it shows you here here you know kilowatt hours um, and then they will show you what our kilometer based on that one so if the trip meter is incorrect then it will also cause the, the consumption to be incorrect, you know. So we'll see then towards the end. But um, yeah, at least now we have uh, we have checked that one. So um, still okay. We are we are at about 80%. Let me show you here. So there we are at 79% now, and we have spent 15 kilowatt hours. Unfortunately, in the Model 3, it doesn't show you fractions like it does in the S and X. So I have to use the distance here multiply with that one to get a more accurate reading yeah we are now at Espa Bolleland so if you come to Norway you really have to visit this place it's about 80 kilometers north of Oslo on E6 you can't miss this sign so they sell good buns here so today I want to treat myself with some buns so I had to go to the restroom bought some drinks and here we are uh, MC Hammer, yes, I prefer, you know, I prefer parking in Nose Inn because then you don't see the damage uh, bumper. <laughs> and this is not, um, this is not, um, uh, we call it panel gap. It's just a trick to keep the heater running. Well, actually, we don't run the heater on anyway right now. We can keep the heater off because it's 17 degrees Celsius outside. But look here, okay. Uh, here we have the live stream going on, by the way, yes. Yeah, they have like, oh, buns, buns, mmm, brains. So I went for Coke, this is bad shit. And then caramel buns are the best. Oh, so let's just munch them and keep dry. Oh, what the heck? Charging limit. Oh, okay, yes. I uh, just, yeah, you wanna lower the charge limit? Yes, let's. Huh, what? I've, I've done it. Gee, okay. So let's uh, keep going then. Just cruising along, listening to some uh, music. It's on 320 kilometers, that's 200 miles. We have another 180 kilometers to go. Oh. Yeah, so nice weather today. Music. Uh, we're just talking about my upcoming trip to Japan. So, yes, nice, good times in MC Hammer. Oh, oh no. MC Hammer just got hammered by. Oh, it's a it's a Mitsubishi plug-in hybrid. Oh shit! We are now at 33%. Yeah, we.
we've done uh, 340 kilometers. Uh, and uh, look here, Miosa is just so calm right now. Uh, this is the time of the day where the wind changes because of the temperature difference. Uh, when the temperature drops uh, in the evening. So uh, it was 20 degrees earlier today. Actually, it's, it's interesting because right here, around here, it's only 12 degrees Celsius, but we are heading north now and further north towards Kormu and then it's warmer there. It was around uh, 19 degrees Celsius. So we shall see soon enough when we get there if it's still nice and warm over there. Right, I'm gonna show you guys a cool feature. So look here, this is the photo map and I want to go to Skyen to the hypercharger there when I'm done. Okay, so what I do is I choose to go to Google Maps like this and then look here now okay so we don't have anything navigating to right and then I do what I do is that I press share and then choose Tesla like this sending send look <laughs> then it navigates to that point <laughs> this future is awesome you know when I was in Netherlands and Belgium um, where was I? I think I was in yeah well, I was in Brussels uh, and then we want we want to find a sushi restaurant and I was busy driving so I told wife in the day can you find a sushi restaurant so she was using it she was looking on on Google on her phone you know and she also has the app and then she found the restaurant and then uh, I told her to just send it to MC Hammer <laughs> that is awesome feature you know? what other car can do this huh 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 Look, look around here, Stange, Kolmoen, we have 18 degrees Celsius, wow, it's nice. So you know what, drier, uh, drier air and higher temperature in the air will make less res resistance, wind resistance or drag. So it's better for me to hang out around here to get better efficiency than on places where it's wet on the ground, more rolling resistance and also moist air will give you more friction. So. Yeah, we're gonna drive around a little bit before we head back to Oslo. So let's crank up the music and enjoy the ride. Alright, we are about to hit 400 kilometers. Uh, well, okay, it's with a 5% error, so it's 400, uh, I mean, it's 390 something, but close enough, yeah. We hit the 400 mark there at least. We're heading home, I mean, we're heading actually to a ski and yeah, to chest the hypercharger, but uh, temperature is dropping, yeah. And uh, you see, it's, it's, it's 13 minutes past nine now, and look outside. <laughs> this is the beauty of the Norwegian summers, is that the days are so long, so I guess, um, well, we'll see in about an hour or so when we are back in Oslo, then it should be uh, completely dark. Nebenes, uh, we have 66 kilometers left. Show here, we've done 433 kilometers so far, consumed 62 kilowatt hours. And oops, oh, it doesn't always does this when uh, it's a merge coming in. And um, okay, so um, it started raining a little bit. Yeah, that means that the consumption goes slightly up. Yeah, not too optimal, but that's fine. Yeah, um, so um, just by the way, you see what the heck is this one? That is, it's uh, it's called GPS plus a uh, GPS test plus, which is an app where you can show elevation and speed and whatever. You see that I'm cruising at 88 kilometers per hour and the elevation right now is 195. And we are going down to sea level, so we'll get some energy back. We just passed Yesheim and um, we also passed the 450 kilometer mark. And the car still says we have 58 kilometers of range, so yeah, looking good for the 500 kilometer mark. And it's wet. I heard on the live stream that it's going to be wet all the way to Oslo. It's raining all the way to Bærum at least. So a wet road means high consumption. You can see it here. We have been hovering around 140 watt hour per kilometer until now, but now we have to uh, go higher, see if 150 roughly. Yeah, but we should still make it to uh, Skyen. Alright, we just passed um, 
Lucent right now and uh, see we're down to 24 kilometers Ooh, we're playing with fire now because here now we have power limit um, there you see the dotted line um, it means that uh, we have restricted power output uh, it's getting close to the end so the BMS is uh, protecting the battery um, so yeah we just have to be a little bit careful about hard acceleration but we st should still be fine we just want to reach let's say 505 kilometers or something all right look here we hit 500 kilometers oh yes the car hasn't died yet it claims 14 kilometers left so um let's just get over to the charger uh it's right over here let's hope it's available hmm. Oh, it seems available. Oh, yes, let's plug it in then. Right, we are finally at the charger in Skyen. Right now I'm blocking it. I will plug it in soon. But anyway, so if we look at the screenshot, um, it seems like we spend 71.1 kilowatt hours and then we have 14 kilometers left and 3%. Yeah, but um, if you crunch the numbers here, it actually turns out that we have only 73.2 kilowatt hours available so uh, 73.2 kilowatt hours I was hoping for 74 hmm so I'm not sure if I mean the car is well the car has done 8,000 kilometers it done some supercharging sessions uh, already uh, so maybe we are already seeing a little bit of degradation because you know people say that the, the, the degradation comes early so maybe that's it but okay whatever now i have a reference point for uh, later um, um uh, test yeah because i was actually guessing 74 earlier but okay uh, now let's plug it in the hypercharger and see what happens so this is a pretty cool place skyen yes we have lots of fast chargers here look, look. and i was lucky to find <laughs> yeah okay so MC Hammer has a broken uh, lip. <laughs> I wonder if the consumption would be better if uh, the front wasn't broken like that. But very impressive. Anyway, so let's see. Is it charging? No. You see, uh, this happens every time. We plug in and then this happens and then it says charging stopped. Yeah, it's just charging stopped. So uh, it happens so many times. It seems like the Model 3 has problems uh, with handshake. So what I have to do is, also because I don't have a fob, I know we can order a fob, but they're always sold out. So what you have to do is unlock charge port, okay, then unplug. I plugged in first and then tried to charge it. So supposedly you have to try a couple of times. So just use the RFID, it's in here. There, okay, now I'm verified and then I say I want the DC, okay. And then we plug in this one, oh shit. Oh. So, this happened last time I also tested and it usually takes a couple of tries before it works. So you can see here, it will try to charge, but what matters is this one needs to turn green. What will happen now? Oh, shit. Okay, it's still, what, what's now? Ready to charge. Oh. So you see, let's try once more then. Um, so, okay. Um, yeah, let me, let me just uh, use two hands. Yes, great news. Finally, it blinks green. <laughs> so that was the fourth or the fifth time I tried it. So you see, we get some stats here. Um, well, it claims uh, 60 kilowatts, 3% uh, state of charge. That's correct. But I've seen that the, this status screen here is actually incorrect. Uh, it's in the car that is more correct. So let's say 60 kilowatts. See the voltage is not too low uh, At 3% getting 300 oh. ah, And then that, that shit happens. Yeah, they should fix it. Alphitronic, the manufacturer, they should fix it So it stays a little bit longer than one minute, but um, Anyway, 62 kilowatt. Okay. Okay. Let's look inside the car. So 62 kilowatts and the live stream people are watching uh, they want to know how it's going. Uh, yeah, well, you see, I'm getting 62 kilowatt here. Yeah, that's great. So uh, let's switch to. I think this one is more useful. Uh, this one, energy. 
but you see we are not getting 120 kilowatt because I believe the battery is too cold right now it will heat up so we'll see if we get 120 kilowatt we'll stay here for uh, maybe 15 20 minutes see what happens yeah I want to see if it heats up during the charging session or not oh yeah look at 10 percent it starts ramping up HVAC is off we just want to see the maximum juice coming out from the hypercharger I still as of the day I don't have the update that unlocks more speed than 120 kilowatts so you should stop at 120 kilowatts boom there yeah but later it will be unlocked for 150 kilowatts so I just have to connect the phone I mean yeah I have to be online uh, uh, and then receive the update so you can see here that we are on the the 8.5 update um, and there's an, a 12.3 wasn't it something yeah so all good, yes, 120 kilowatts. Uh, this is actually a two more kilowatt than uh, supercharger. For some reason, the supercharger only outputs 118 kilowatt today. Mm, look here, I fired the heater, expecting this one to drop, but it actually didn't drop. So let's let's try something. Let's make the heater pull some extra power here. Yeah, 26 degrees Celsius. The heater is pulling extra power and let's see now outside because now it reports 120 kilowatt and we are trying to heat up the car uh, let's see if if the charger is giving me more more than 120 kilowatt and then it diverts some of the power to the heater because I know that oh look at this this is awesome I never seen it before it seems like you know the charger can output more and so um so the car is able to divert some of this power to the heater and the rest to the battery so that the battery is taking 120 kilowatt which is limited to it and then the heater is taking the rest wow and you see it drops now naturally because the heater initially needed some power but then it drops so it's not going to output six kilowatt continuously so it drops to about 4.5 or uh, 5 that is still a very powerful heater <laughs> Wow, I wonder if this is a feature with the Model 3 because I've never seen it before in the Model S and X. It seems like the Model S and X, once you pull power, it will steal it from, I mean, it's like it has one, let's say one, one way of inputting power. And if you want to run the heater, then the heater will steal that power going into the battery, regardless if, if the charger could output more. I've seen it when I did, did the, the 50 kilowatt uh, charging sessions with Optimus Prime several times. But this is this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is nice because uh, here you pay 3.5 nook per minute. It doesn't matter how many kilowatt hours you pull out. It actually, ideally, you want to pull as many kilowatt hours as possible during your charging session. You want to charge as fast as possible. Yeah. So. Uh, Anyway, but I want to see something else here, a bug, because here it says that we have been here 12, you see, 12 minutes now, and it reports uh, 19 kilowatt hours. Maybe this one is not bugged. I, there's the other one, okay, 19 kilowatt hours. What is the car reporting? The car is reporting 17, 18. Well, you know what, that is correct, yeah because the heat there took the rest <laughs> but the other one I tried earlier at the Rigia was buggy it showed incorrect numbers but this one shows the correct numbers that is awesome oh we have to do this more scientific okay let's switch off HVAC now now HVAC is off right the car is still pulling 120 kilowatt now let's see what the charger reports the charger the charger should report 120. Yes, as expected. Aha! Uh -huh. Because then this indicates that the heater was in fact pulling that extra 5 kilowatt or whatever. Well, alright, um, I think that's it. Yes, that was the battery uh, capacity test of. Uh, Model 3 and also well as a nice bonus I also did a range test of it and it turns out that on good driving conditions even today wasn't perfect um, you can get 500 kilometers of range from a Model 3 performance so I start to think that the performance is less efficient than the non-performance because of the 20 inch wheel so 
uh, Mega Yul, they actually found a pair of rims, 18 inch rims that fits in the in my car. Yeah, so I will test that later uh, just to see uh, if. If you know, I can get this car as efficient as a Model Three, uh, Model Three in standard, not performance. But all right. So anyway, I think that'll be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching, and talk to you later.